Hi guys, it's me, Lori from Tiori, and today we're gonna play Nusantara again. So let's get this thing started. I'm not going inside the forest after all. You just said it's dangerous at night, so it's fine if I go out during the day, right? Reasoning with myself, I decided to take a walk along the forest border near the village. The forest was beautiful and relaxing in many ways. The crunching sound of dry leaves whenever I walked, the shadows of the trees protecting me from the harsh sunlight. The sound of birds chirping were like greetings to my ears, and the glowing stones enhanced the green forest, giving it a mysterious trait. After making sure that I was not too far from the village, I picked up a random blue stone, chose a spot, and sat beneath the tree. Hmm. It's more like a crystal, or is it a mineral? I don't know, since I never saw them before. Surely Ashi and Tsukuma were collecting them for a reason? What was it for? The crystal in my hand was slightly smaller than my thumb. Some crystals were clear, while others were murky. One... Okay, I can't wait. When I exposed it to the sunlight, it glittered from within. They were growing almost everywhere and easy to pick. I meant pluck, either from the ground or the tree barks. But the bigger the crystal, the bigger the resistance. I wonder. I guess we're gonna poke it? I poked it. Once, twice, nothing really happened. Okay. So let's knock it. I knocked it on the ground and the tree box. Nothing happened. Great. Now let's throw it. Great idea. I threw it and hit a tree. It felt with a soft thump. Okay. Alright, this is silly. I didn't know why Ashi and Tsukuma were collecting them. Aside from glowing, I thought they were just ordinary stones. Oh well, I would know sooner or later anyways. A gentle wind was blowing and I closed my eyes to enjoy it letting the cold afternoon breeze cool my overheated skin. I also heard a faint sound of water running. Hmm, maybe Hakuna Falls was closer than I thought. I couldn't remember the last time I felt this relaxed. I was sure Ashi and Tsukuma wouldn't mind as long as I got back before dinner while I'm stumbling over myself. Before I knew it, the sound of water running and the leaves grazing each other lulled me into sleep. Hmm? Hmm. What the heck is this sound? Oh, not you again. <gasps> a familiar white bird perched on the tree right in front of me. It took me a second to realize what it really was. It's the stupid bird from yesterday, the one who led me to this world. So that's what I've forgotten. I rose up to my feet and quickly approached the white bird. Who are you and what do you want from me? <laughs> Stop laughing and answer me. I want to go home. You cannot go home before you finish your quest. As for who I am, I was sent by the goddess Fate to summon you. Call me Sari. I was a little surprised when I heard a familiar voice brushing my mind. It sounded like a teenage girl, but I had a touch of elegance which made it more mature. I almost died. If your goddess wants something from me, at least tell her not to kill me in the process first. True. Do you think it's funny to send me skydiving? That was a little mistake on our part. But you're here now, right? Oh my gosh, I messed up on the character voice. Whatever. I could sense amusement radiating from her. Don't I have any say in this? Why couldn't you just ask me instead of kidnap me? Why me? Kidnapping? Such a rude word. We prefer the term spirited away. They're not that different. As for your concern, you don't have to worry about anything. Whoops, forgot it was sorry talking. When you return back to your world, not even a minute would have passed since the time you stepped out from the bus. 
She was obviously avoiding my question. There was a moment of silence between us before she sighed and conceded. We're afraid that you're the only one who can help us, Tamara. If you refuse, you will be a witness to the end of Sakuma's tribe and even the end of the human race before it even has the chance to begin. What? Whoa, whoa, wait. What does Sakuma tribe have to do with the human race? They're not even humans. They are your ancestors. Huh? What? I'm spirited away to the past? Is that even possible? Wait, my ancestors have wings? Isn't the human race supposed to have evolved from monkeys? Well, the winged people looks more similar to humans than monkeys, so I don't know why you're freaking out on that one. As hard as it was to fathom, I couldn't help but ask myself, was she telling me the truth? Or simply messing with me? If I didn't know better, I would just laugh it off like a bad joke. But after experiencing this, this, this whole new level of absurdity, did not say that right, but okay. I did not know what to believe anymore. Sorry, simply scuffed at my outburst. If monkeys can evolve into humans, surely it didn't close the possibilities of birds evolving into humans. Just so you know, reptiles also evolve into humans here. Uh, oh come on. My ancestors are birds? What now? Pigs can fly, and there are pink elephants with polka dots. Is it really that hard to believe? No, I believe it. Didn't, didn't the fossil records in the human world indicate that dinosaurs evolved into birds? Your knowledge and the way of thinking is just too shallow. I really, really didn't know what to say. This is not what I expected, or something that my mind could easily accept. Not to mention a bird had just told me that my knowledge was too shallow. Let's put this aside for now. The problem is still the same. Do you wish to save your ancestors, or should I save the human race? This is ridiculous. Fine, I'll believe you, but why me? I'm just an ordinary girl, and I'm below average in looks and in the intelligence department. Can I meet the goddess? She should speak to me in person if she wants to ask something huge from me. I played along as I tried to test her. Believe me, we chose you for a reason, and I've already said you're the only one who can do this. Have you forgotten? Tamara, you've already met the goddess once. She even promised to meet you again. What? Who? Huh? You mean that shadowy figure who opened up the hole is the goddess? Did your goddess ever consider my safety first before she suddenly transported me? Give me a parachute, airplane, or possibly even wings. She's the goddess, right? Are you still mad about that? Yes, our apologies. The only portal to get here is in the sky. What matters now is that you're here and didn't die. Everything is according to our plan. I seriously doubted that. The goddess is also aware how difficult this quest is, and we have chosen three people to help you. Each of them is unique, but whether it, it will work or not, it will all depend on you. They will help you, but you have to gain their favor first. And remember, in the end, you just have to choose one. So choose wisely. Wait, I still have so many questions. Why can't I choose all of them? Who are the three people that will help me? Hey, you haven't even told me about the details of my quest. Everything will be known at the right time. Trust me. And when you succeed tomorrow, you will receive something utterly priceless. Something that's even more precious than all the treasures in the world combined. That was the last thing I heard from Sari before she was gone. I stood up for a moment, processing the information in my brain. 
I had to pinch my arm to reassure myself I was not dreaming. Ouch. All these things happening in just a little over three days. I was surprised my brain was still working and not bursting from the information overload. And the information wasn't that bad. It's worse at school, especially in AP Bio. I walked slowly back to Tsukuma's house, wondering how to explain this situation. Granny Tsukuma is right. The goddess fate did send me here for a reason, to save the human race. How ridiculous is that? Me? I hardly have any talent, let alone having what it takes to be a hero. I sighed. I just noticed it was almost night. More reasons to master their language quickly. That is, if I can survive Tsukuma's lectures tonight. I hurried my pace to Grandma Tsukuma's house. Don't want to get yelled at too much. Chapter 2 Quest Scene 1 Meeting the guys. Since Sari told me about my quest, I made myself ready for meeting new people. But after two days, I hadn't met anyone new. Let alone meeting the three people who were supposed to help me, I haven't even met the Luma villagers. Or Loma. I still had my doubts, so I hadn't told Granny Tsukuma about this either. Aside from that, my language lessons still needed a little more time, but I was getting familiar with it, and I thought I had covered the daily conversations now, even though I was still a little bit slow. The Komodo hunt had finally come to an end. I still remember how Yuda boasted yesterday about how he chased them away by himself. Apparently, the one who managed to shoot them down with an arrow was him, and the error enemy was forced to retreat. God, I can't talk today. When I woke up in the morning, I found Ashi in the living room, picking up some blue crystals we had collected earlier. Still don't know what they're for. Good morning, Ashi. Where's Granny Sukuma? She's visiting the neighbors. Your breakfast is almost ready. Oh, I had the blue crystals in her hands. Dang it, I was determined to find out about it myself, but heck, my research about those rocks is not progressing well. And I finally decided to ask about it. What are you going to do with those crystals? This? I'll use this for cooking, of course. That was not the answer I expected. Uh, cooking? As she gave me a questioning look, and I decided to answer her before she asked. You see, I've been curious about these blue crystals ever since the first time I saw one. So when Granny Tsukuma sent us to collect lots of them, I can't help but wonder what they were supposed to be used for. I poked at them, smacked them to the ground, threw them at a tree, and recently I even considered to sniff the damn crystals, or sniff. Tamara, no swearing. Just to know what they're used for. So I don't mind. I would like you to enlighten me about these crystals. There, I said it. Ashy laughed at my antics and patted my head. Oh, silly me. I haven't told you about the crystals, right? I'm sorry for causing you such a dilemma. I thought you already knew about the blue crystals. I suppose you don't have them from where you came from. Nope, I don't have shiny, beautiful, glittering blue crystals from where I came from. And also, I can talk to Ashy now. My language skills in three days are amazing. She sniggled me to the signal. Signal. Oh, sniggle. Signal me to come closer, and so I did. Okay, the, the reason why I was saying sniggle instead of signal is because my little sister has problems with pronunciation and instead of saying signal, she says niggle. So yeah. She was holding one of the clear crystals in the right hand and a murky crystal on the other hand. When she struck them lightly, the crystals gave off a spark of blue fire from the friction. Oh, so it's like flint? My eyes widened in surprise and I felt like smacking myself on the forehead. Ooh, you struck them together. I wonder why the thought never crossed my mind before. I don't know. 
more time around. But guys, thanks for watching. This is gonna be it. Make sure you click that like button and also please subscribe to my channel and maybe comment down below. And I'm super sorry for not having this up. School is like, yeah, school's been busy recently, and I gotta take my exams, ACT, SATs, and whatnot. Well, thanks for watching. See you soon.